how to do a pre-trip inspection on a Class A rated vehicle today. Pre-trip is one of the most important things that a driver has to do on a daily basis in order to make sure that the vehicle is safe to get out on the road. Not only are you required to actually do the pre-trip, you're required for documenting that you did it and you are required for the results of it, meaning that if you go out on the road with a vehicle that's unsafe and you shouldn't have, you can get a ticket for it, you can be fined for it, so you got to be careful, you got to know what you're doing. We're going to show you here not only how to do the pre-trip, but we're also going to demonstrate the specifics in passing the CDL test. In order to get your Class A license, the first thing you have to do is demonstrate a proper and thorough pre-trip. The difference between demonstrating it for the test and actually doing one in real life, during the test, remember, the examiner is not testing the truck, they're testing you. Do you know what you're doing? So in, the, in order to be expedient and make things happen quicker, they don't necessarily require you to do the whole truck. They want to see if you understand the parts. So on most trucks, there's going to be redundant parts. Um, on one side of the vehicle, you got tires. On the other side of the vehicle, you got tires. And you got brake chambers and rims, and they're all the same. So most of what you're going to be checking is down the driver's side of the truck, the truck for the test. But for an actual pre-trip, obviously, you need to check both sides in order to make sure the vehicle's safe. During your pre-trip exam on the test, the only time you're going to be on the passenger side of the vehicle is when you're checking something that's unique to that side of the vehicle. You won't find it on the driver's side. If it's something that's redundant that you'll find on both sides of the vehicle and they're exactly the same, you check it from the driver's side. So we're going to go ahead and get started. One of the things I want you to understand is that this is our pre-trip here. This is how we teach it at the class. This is, this is the, um, the forms that we use. The, for the purposes of the exam, they break the vehicle down into three sections. Remember I said they don't want to check the whole truck necessarily. They want to make sure that you know what you're doing. So they're going to break it down into three sections. And for the examiner, it's called a Form A, a Form B, or a Form C. You're not going to know which one they're going to give you when you get there. So you have to know the whole truck. But if you get a Form A, like this is our Form A, a Form A will be from the front of the truck. It'll be both sides of the engine compartment and the coupling. A Form B, which would be on the next page, would be from the driver's side of the truck, the rear of the truck, and coupling, and a Form C would be coupling and the trailer. So you always end up doing coupling, and then the other part that everybody ends up doing is going to be an end cap. Your end cap is where you check all your gauges and you do your brake check. Now the one thing to keep in mind, during the rest of the exam for your yard skills and your road skills, you don't want to accumulate points. Accumulating points is a bad thing. Accumulating points means that you've um, you've done something wrong and you've been assigned a point for it and that too many points fail you. For your pre-trip, an accumulation of points is what you want. The more things you name, the more things you do properly, the more points you accumulate and then you'll end up passing. The one thing that will fail you though immediately on your pre-trip that there, you can't get anything wrong on is your brake check. And we're going to go through that thoroughly so you understand that when you do your brake check, your brake check has to be 100%. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a Form A, flow right through it like as if you get the whole truck, because you could get that as well. Sometimes, randomly in the computer, you could just end up getting, you could end up pulling the whole truck, and you got to know how to do the whole thing. So we're starting at the front of the truck. Now with each new section, we're going to do what's called a general overview. Every time you go to a new section, you do a general overview. Now, general overview is just that. It's an opportunity to just do a cursory look at the vehicle and, and the area you're inspecting to notice if you see anything damaged. So on my general overview of the front of my vehicle, I don't see anything damaged, I don't see anything hanging off, I don't see any of my mirror brackets cracked or broken. You're going to get into some of the more specific stuff, so you're going to look at the top and all my lights, my marker lights, they're not cracked, damaged, or loose, they're clean and of the proper color. All my uh, lenses on the front end for my uh, headlights, they're not cracked, they're not uh, damaged in any way, they're not fogged out, uh, they're clean and of the proper color. Um, I would take a look, oh, at, like I said, uh, during my general overview, I'd look at the front of the vehicle and see if it's leaning to one side or another. If it was leaning to one side or another, that might indicate some kind of suspension damage, that it's, uh, something is wrong with the suspension and it's, and it's allowing the vehicle to tilt to one side or the other. Or in, in the other thing I would do is I'd look underneath the vehicle and I would want to make sure that I don't notice any puddles dripping out from underneath the engine some kind of uh, oil leak or a radiator leak. It would indicate some kind of fluid, uh, a line or a hose or a radiator that's been damaged and it's leaking fluid out on the floor. So with that being said, I don't see any fluids underneath. I'm, I'm ready to proceed to the engine compartment. We're gonna start with the passenger side of the engine compartment because there's less things on the passenger side to check. I like to do one side, get it out of the way, and then move to the next one so that way we're not bouncing around back and forth and forgetting things. So I'm gonna start with uh, opening up the hood. 
When you open up the hood, be careful how you open it. Make sure you use your footrest if you have one. As you tilt the hood forward, control the hood as you lay it down so you don't break the hood. And then we're going to move around to the passenger side of our engine compartment. So we're on the passenger side of our engine compartment. Now, keep in mind, every motor is a little bit different. Every engine, every engine compartment. This is a Freightliner Columbia 120. It's got a Mercedes motor in it. You might be driving a Peterbilt with a Cummings motor in it. You could be driving a Kenworth uh, with a Cummings motor in it. You, you, everything's going to be a little bit different. So what I want you to be able to do is learn how to identify the parts that you need to check. So it doesn't matter what vehicle you're on, you know how to find it. There's certain ways to track certain things down. So if I look at this engine compartment, remember what I said, on every new section, we're going to start with a general overview. So a general overview of the passenger side of my engine compartment, I don't see anything cracked, damaged, or loose. I don't see any, any hoses that are hanging loose. None of my hoses have any abrasions, bumps, or cuts in them. They're not leaking any fluids. So I don't see anything damaged. So we're gonna start with some of the more specific things. Now on this side of the engine compartment, there's really only two things I need to check on this motor. On this side, what we've got here is the first thing I'm gonna check is my water pump. My water pump is right here. Now, how do I know it's a water pump? Well, you've gotta look for the things that would give you that clue. I know what a water pump does. A water pump pumps water through the engine and that water comes from the radiator. So the radiator being right here, what I do is I look for the hoses that come out of the radiator. So I've got a hose right here that comes out of the radiator and goes into the top of the water pump right there. And then I got a hose over here, which comes out of the bottom of the radiator. And you can see it right there. It clamps to the water pump right there. So I know that's my water pump. So what I would do is identify that this is my water pump. It's not cracked. It's not damaged or loose. It's not leaking any fluids um, and it's properly bolted to the motor. You do have to identify that it is a belt driven water pump. There's the belt right there. You would have to identify that the belt is not damaged. It's not frayed. It's not uh, cut, has no abrasions, bumps or cuts, and it has no more than three quarters of an inch of play on it when, the, uh, when you push on it to make sure that it's properly tight, which this one is. Now, if you take a look here, the only other thing that we would check from this side would be my radiator. My radiator is not cracked, damaged, or loose. It has no, um, it's, it's properly bolted and secured in the frame. It has no leaks. I can see that it's not leaking. The core's not leaking out onto the ground, and the radiator is in good condition. So everything else on this side of the engine compartment, my frame, my, my brake chambers, my tires, um, they're just exactly the same thing on the other side of the engine compartment. We'll check it over there. So here we are on the driver's side of our engine compartment. Um, again, like with every new section, we're going to start with a general overview. The general overview of the driver's side of my engine compartment, I don't see anything crack damaged or loose. I don't see any of my hoses that have any abrasions or cuts in them. I'm not leaking any fluids on the ground. Everything appears, appears to be in good condition on my general overview. Now I like to use a, a system that helps me remember things. So I work in an order that keeps things in mind and I, I allow what I see on the truck to remind me of what I need to have, what I need to check. So I, I like to try and keep it simple, work my way from the back of the motor to the front and from the inside of the motor out. So if I start at the back firewall here and start looking at things I need to check, I know I need to check this. This is my overflow reservoir for my radiator system. It's not cracked or, or broken. It's not leaking any fluids in any way. And you do want to mention that all the hoses that lead to and from it um, have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, and that um, it's not le they're not leaking any fluid. Also, you want to mention that the cap is properly secured. This is my uh, windshield washer uh, fluid reservoir. It's not cracked or damaged in any way. It's not leaking any fluids. The cap's properly secured. So I'm going to work my way again from the back. When I start with the motor here, I'm going to look at some key components here. The first part I'm going to identify here, this is my, um, my air compressor pump for my air brake system. It's not cracked, damaged, broken, or loose. It's properly bolted to the motor. The hoses that lead to and from it are properly fitted, and they're not leaking in any way. The next thing I'm going to look at is what is my power steering pump, which is right under it. It's not uncommon to find your power steering pump being driven off the exact same gear that drives the uh, air pump. You do have to mention that your air pump is not belt driven either in this case. If it was belt driven, it would be mounted up near the front of the motor with a belt around it. This one is gear driven. The re how I know this is my power steering pump is because I've got, this is my power steering gearbox here, and this is my power steering fluid reservoir. Well, I look at the hoses that lead out of it, and I follow the hoses all the way back, and I see that with hydraulic lines and hydraulic fittings, they go into the power steering pump right there. So I know that's my power steering pump. You identify that your power steering pump is not cracked, damaged, broken in any way. It's not leaking any fluids. 
and it's, um, it's properly bolted to the motor. And all the hoses that lead to and from it have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, and they're not leaking any fluid. Okay, the next thing I would identify is going to be, this is my oil fill cap right here. My oil fill cap is properly secured, and this is my oil uh, level dipstick. Uh, the dipstick, you don't have to actually pull it out and check it for the pre-trip exam. You do have to obviously pull it out and check it when you do a real pre-trip. All you would identify is this is my dipstick. Um, I would check the oil level by pulling it out, wiping it clean, reinserting it, pulling it back out again, checking and make sure that the oil is above the ad line. You would have to tell the examiner that. The next thing you're going to check is your alternator. This is my alternator. My alternator is not cracked damaged. It's properly bolted and it's secured and you identify that the alternator is belt driven. It does have a belt on it. The belt is not frayed or damaged in any way and it has no more than three quarters of an inch of play uh, when you pull on it and make sure it's in good condition. So as I start working my way out, the first thing I'm gonna hit is my frame, okay? This is my frame rail. You can see it running there. My frame is not cracked, damaged, or broken. It's also, you do wanna mention that it's free from any illegal welds, okay? So as I'm working my way out, remember I'm gonna, as I work my way out through the system, Next thing I'm going to hit is what's bolted to it, my shock tower here. This is my shock. My shock upper mount and my lower mount down there are not cracked, damaged, or loose, or broken. The shock itself is not cracked, damaged, or loose. And because the shock does have hydraulic fluid in it, you do have to mention that the shock is not leaking any fluids. Then I'm going to go to the front here of my leaf spring hangers. These are my leaf spring hangers. They're not cracked, damaged, or loose, properly bolted to the leaf spring. Both my front and rear hanger, you can see the rear hanger all the way back there, it's not cracked, damaged, or loose, they're in good condition. My leaf spring itself is not cracked, damaged, or loose, it's not bent or broken. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look at, well, what's it bolted to? The leaf spring secures and, and allows for the suspension components to travel with the front axle, the front steer axle. This is the front steer axle. My front steer axle is not cracked or damaged, it's not bent or broken, and it's free from any illegal welds. And how it's bolted to the leaf spring is through these bolts, through this lower airbag plate, and these bolts here and these mounting plates on the bottom. They're not cracked or damaged, bent or broken, and the bolts are not loose. Looseness on these areas here would be indicated by shiny metal around them or metal shavings. Now this is an air ride front suspension. If this had a bump stop on it, just a rubber bump stop at the top, so that if it bumps up against a frame, it doesn't hit metal to metal, it would be U-bolts that attached it. But in this case, it's airbag. So you do have to mention that the upper and the lower plates are not cracked, damaged, or loose. They're properly secured to the frame. And that the bag itself has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, and it's not leaking any air out of them. Okay? So I'm going to work my way across. As I'm coming out again, I'm going to hit my power steering gearbox. This is the gearbox that gives the ability, as I steer the wheel, to turn the, to turn the wheels. So I'm going to look at all my steering components. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit my, my, power, uh, my, uh, my steering shaft. It's not cracked, damaged, bent, or broken. And remember, you do have to mention that it has no more than 10 degrees of play. When you move it like this, it can't have more than 10 degrees of slop in it. That would indicate that your U-joints are starting to wear down and they would need replacing. So the next thing I'm going to look at is my U-joints. My U-joints are not cracked or damaged in any way. They're not showing any signs of unusual wear, and they're properly lubricated. My power steering gearbox is not cracked, damaged, or broken. It's not leaking any fluids, and it is properly bolted to the frame. You would mention the power steering reservoir. The fluid reservoir is not cracked, damaged, or broken, and it, because it holds fluids, it's not leaking any fluids out of it, and all the hoses that lead to and from it have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, and they're not leaking any fluid. These are your, this is your three-piece steering linkage. That's all you have to call it. You don't have to know the, independent, the individual names, your drag link and all that. All you have to do is say, my three-piece steering linkage is not cracked, damaged, or broken, and it's properly secured with castle nuts. You can see these castle nuts. There's going to be one right here, and there's going to be one right there. Those are castle nuts. They call them castle nuts because they look like the top of a castle. They're properly secured with castle nuts and your cotter pins that hold them in place. Okay, so as you steer, as you turn, the power steering gearbox move these pieces, which turns this tire. Well, down at the back here, right in the back here, bef behind your front steer axle, there's a tie rod. You have to check that as well, and you have to make sure that your tie rod is not cracked, damaged, or broken. It's free from any illegal welds. And what that does, what that tie rod does is, as you steer, okay, and you turn the gearbox, 
it turns your front driver's side tire, well that tie rod connects to the passenger side tire and it makes the passenger side tire turn the exact same amount that your front, your front uh, uh, driver's side tire does. That's what connects them together. That's why it's called a tie rod. All right, um, and now we're gonna move into the brake components. If you look here, you'll see that we've got our brake lines that lead to our brake chamber. This is our front brake chamber. Our brake lines have no abrasions, bumps or cuts. Uh, they're not leaking. This little electrical line is my front wheel speed sensor for my ABS, for my anti-lock braking system. It has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, and it's in good condition. This is my front brake chamber. Now, if you look at this, you'll notice this is a single chamber. This is what would be called a service brake chamber because it doesn't have a spring on the back for emergency brakes. You would say that my, service, my, my brake chamber is not cracked, damaged, or loose. It's properly mounted and secured. The plate is not cracked, damaged, or loose. There's the bolt right there that holds it. This piece in here is called your push rod, and this is a slack adjuster right here. So what you would say is my push rod, my brake chamber, my push rod, and my slack adjuster are not cracked, damaged, or loose, and my brake chamber is not leaking. And you would have to check it by pulling on it and making sure that you have no more than one inch of slack on it when the brakes are released. So you grab it like this and you pull on it. Okay, now what you're checking there, when you pull on that, when you apply your brake, air pressure builds up behind this chamber here and pushes that push rod out, which rotates this cam out, this, this uh, slack adjuster out, which rotates that S camshaft, which is down inside here, which goes into the brake system and spreads apart the brakes with an S cam uh, device that's inside the brakes. So as you apply the brakes, this pushes out and that rotates that S cam shaft, which rotates the S cam, which applies the brakes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go poke in the truck real quick and I'm going to apply the brake and you're going to see how it operates. You're going to see how it pushes out. So what's happening when you're checking it to make sure that it has no more than one inch of slack, what you're doing, what this device does, is as your brake pads begin to wear, when they start off, they're about that thick. And as they begin to wear, they get thinner and thinner. Well, if this didn't accommodate for that wear, the gap between the pad and the drum would get too big. So what this does is every time you apply the brake, if it senses that it has to travel too far because the brake pads are wearing, it allows it to adjust properly so that when you apply the brakes again, it has more travel to it. So you have to check that travel. And what you're really checking when you pull on that is making sure that the gap between the pads and the drum is sufficient. Any more than an inch is way too far if it has to travel that far. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna reposition the camera and we're gonna get a better look at the inside of the brakes and how they operate. All right, so we're taking a, we're inside the drum here. We're looking at the, because as we moved in from the slack adjuster, the next thing you have to check is your brake pads here. These are your brake pads. Your brake pads can't be cracked, damaged, or loose. They have to have at least one quarter inch of pad material, which these have plenty on them. And you want to make sure that they're free from any contaminants or grease between the drum and the pad, that there's no oil leaking out from the axle or something like that and getting in between the pad and the drum. You want to make sure that the drum is dry. The next thing you would check would be the drum itself. It's not cracked or damaged in any way. Um, and then the inside of the wheel. The inside of the wheel is not cracked or damaged. It's free from any illegal welds. You do have to notice that. Um, some people will try and fix a rim by welding it instead of replacing it. That's improper. Uh, so you have to make sure it's free from any illegal welds. The next thing you would check as we're working our way out is the bead here to make sure that the tire is properly seated to the inside of the rim, which it is. Then you would check the inside side wall of the tire to make sure that it has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. That's free from any defects. And then you would move your way out and we'll check uh, the front of the tire the same way. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we're on the outside of the, of the tire. Again, you're gonna do the same thing like you just checked the inside of the, the tire wall. You're gonna check the outside of the tire wall. Make sure that it has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. It's free from any defects. That it is properly seated to the rim itself, okay? You would also wanna check the top of the tire if you come over here, you can take a look. Now what's important to remember about this is you want to make sure that it has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. It's free from any defects or issues or problems. But you also need to remember that because this is a front steer tire, it has to have at least 4 seconds of an inch tread depth on it 
Um, the tread depth has to be at least 4 30 seconds of an inch deep. You would check that with a tire gauge. It's simply a little gauge that you put on top of the tire and press the plunger down in there and it'll tell you how deep the tread depth is. You want to check it on several different areas of the tires in order to make sure that you don't have an area that's wearing excessively or giving you any issues. So you want to make sure the top of the tire is smooth, not showing any signs of uneven wear, at least 4 30 seconds of an inch tread depth, has no abrasions, bumps or cuts, nothing, no uh, screws or nails or anything stuck in it. You do also have to mention that these tires, because it's a front steer tire, front steer tires have to be virgin radials. They can't be recaps, they can't be regrooves or retreaded tires. They have to be matching virgin radial, matching in size from both, both front steer tires. Every vehicle, now keep in mind, a tractor and a trailer are two independent vehicles. Every vehicle has to have the same size tires on it. So they have to be the same on each vehicle. The trailer can have different size tires than the tractor does and vice versa, but on each vehicle they have to be the same. But like I said, these have to be virgin radials. So let's move on to the outside of the rim. As we move our way down, the rim itself, I would check the rim face. It's not showing any signs of damage. It's not cracked or damaged. Um, it's free from any illegal welds. Remember I said you have to make sure it's free from any illegal welds. You would check each lug nut. The lug nuts themselves are not cracked or damaged. Uh, they're not loose. Looseness, you could check by Looseness would be indicated many times by rust streaks going down the face of the rim where water rusted out the stud behind and because it's loose that rusty water is allowed to run down the face of the rim and it would leave rust streaks down the face of the rim. Also sometimes you'll notice around the lug nut itself you'll see shiny metal where it's because it's loose it's vibrating and it's wearing the aluminum into a shiny spot. You would check your wheel seal. My wheel seal is not cracked, damaged or loose. It's not leaking any, any fluids out of the front wheel axle. And then the last thing I would check would be my valve stem right here. My valve stem is, is not cracked damaged. It's not leaking any air out of it. And this is where you would check obviously your tire pressure. You do have to mention that I would check my tire pressure. I would, it has to be at least 100 PSI and you would check that with a gauge. So we're, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna continue moving down the driver's side of the vehicle. So here we are on the driver's side of the truck. Again, general overview. The general overview of the side of my truck. I don't see anything cracked or damaged or loose. Uh, my marker lights are clean, they're of the proper color. So we're going to start with some of the more specific stuff. I'm going to check my, my mirror brackets here. They're not cracked or damaged. My mirrors are not cracked or damaged, they're clean. I'm going to check my door. My window is not cracked or damaged. The door itself opens properly. I'm going to check the hinges on the inside of the door. I'm also going to check my weather stripping. It doesn't appear to have any abrasions, bumps, or cuts. It's in good condition. The door closes properly. I'm going to work my way down the side, check my fuel tank. My fuel tank straps that secure the fuel tank are not cracked or damaged. The fuel tank itself is not cracked or damaged. It's not leaking any, any diesel fuel out of it. You're going to need to check the cap by removing it because you've got to look inside here. There's a safety seal on the inside here. You want to make sure that it's not cracked or damaged. It's not showing any abrasions, bumps, or cuts, and that the safety chain itself is present so you don't lose your cap. And put it back. And check my steps. They're not cracked or damaged. They're properly bolted in place. They're in good condition. Work my way down the side of the vehicle. I'm going to come around to the, to the back here of the vehicle. And I'm going to check my, the back of my truck. The back of my truck has no intrusions into the cab. Nothing is cracked or damaged. I don't see anything loose, any of the brackets. Any of my fairings here are not cracked or damaged. I'm going to check all my lenses, lights, and reflectors. They're clean and of the proper color. Now remember I said that we only go to the passenger side to do something that is not located here, if it's something unique on the passenger side. And this is different for every vehicle. On this vehicle, this vehicle doesn't have exhaust stacks like you see on most semis. This truck has what they call a weed burner because it's an exhaust that points down to the ground and it's on the passenger side. So let's go over there and I'll show you how to check that. So this is the exhaust, this is the exhaust muffler here, and the exhaust runs up along the frame rail there. I'm going to check my exhaust, my muffler, it's not cracked or damaged, it's properly bolted, all the straps are in good condition. The exhaust system itself is not cracked or damaged, it's not leaking. For an exhaust system, leaks would be indicated around the clamps by black soot. You'd see black soot coming out from around the clamps. In this case, we don't have any issues, everything is properly secured, and this exhaust system is in good condition. So we're going to move back over to the driver's side of the vehicle. So we're back here on the driver's side of our vehicle. We're going to continue our check through. Um, we finished up on this part. We did the back of the, the truck. We're going to finish. We're going to continue with the hoses. 
All my hoses have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. They're not cracked or damaged in any way. They got sufficient clearance off the catwalk, so I know that they're not gonna rub against the catwalk. That's a good opportunity to check my catwalk. It's not cracked or damaged. None of them are loose, they're in good condition. I can check these airbags right here, because they are part of the air system. This is an air ride cab. The airbags have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, and they're not leaking any air. They're in good condition. I'm gonna check my frame rails. My frame rails are not cracked or damaged in any way. They're not showing any signs of illegal welds. It's not damaged. My drive shaft, my drive shaft is not cracked or damaged. It's in good condition. The U-joints that are on the drive shaft that go to the differential are not cracked or damaged. They're not showing any signs of uneven wear and they are properly greased. I'm gonna check my glad hands where they couple to the trailer. This is how it supplies air to the trailer. You would remove them and check the seals in the inside and make sure that they have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts and that they're properly connected. I would also check my electrical line, make sure it's properly secured. You would pull it, look inside and make sure there's no debris stuck inside and that there's no, um, none of the prongs are bent as well. I would check the, um, the front of my trailer to make sure there's no intrusions into the trailer, that it's not damaged in any way. I don't see anything cracked or damaged. My marker lights at the top are clean, they're not cracked damaged, and they're of the proper color. So if you want to come around the other side, we'll start checking, we'll start moving our way down the trailer and we'll check the coupling as well. So we're going to move around the side of our trailer here. We're going to check, this is called our side skirt. Our skirt is not cracked or damaged, it's not broken. We're going to get down, we're going to get underneath and we're going to look up under here. We're going to start with our coupling here. Now, this is our fifth wheel assembly, okay? Um, and this upper part here is, this is the apron for the trailer, okay? This is the part that, that rides on the fifth wheel assembly. So you're gonna say my apron is not cracked or damaged in any way, it's in good condition. This is my fifth wheel. My fifth wheel skid plate is not cracked or damaged. Um, it's not bent or broken. It's properly secured to the platform here with this platform pin. The platform pl uh, pin is not cracked or damaged properly secured with a cotter pin. This is the release handle for the fifth wheel that releases it so you can pull the trailer away. The uh, release handle is not cracked or damaged and it is in the locked position, meaning it's pulled all the way back. If it was sticking out here, it would be in the released position, but this is in the locked position. The platform itself is not cracked or damaged. It's not bent or broken. And then you would identify that this particular uh, fifth wheel is a non-sliding fifth wheel. This is bolted to the frame directly, it doesn't slide, and both my upper and my lower bolts are properly secured, they're not cracked or damaged, and it is properly bolted to the frame. If this was a sliding fifth wheel, the sliding fifth, you would indicate that it is a sliding fifth wheel, that the pins were in the locked position in the carriage that it rides in, and you would also need to check the, um, the, hydro, I mean the uh, air piston that moves the, um, the, slide, the fifth wheel release back and forth, that the air piston itself is not cracked or damaged and that the hose leading to it has no abrasions, bumps or cuts and it's not leaking in any way. But because this is a non-sliding fifth wheel, you don't need to. Let's go, we're gonna move around to underneath the truck and continue the coupling from there. So if you look up inside the fifth wheel there, you can see the fifth wheel, sh the shackle is locked around the shank of the kingpin and it's in, in the locked position. I can see all the grease that's on my kingpin, so I know my kingpin is not prop is properly greased. And that tells me that I'm properly coupled to the fifth wheel. Now, from you can see it from the side and from the back. The other thing you want to make sure of that's very important, that you don't have any gap, any daylight between the apron and the fifth wheel. You want to make sure that that lets you know that the, the trailer is properly rested on the fifth wheel and that you haven't high hooked. But if I can look back in there and see that it's locked into the lock position with the shackle, around that shank, then I know that it's, uh, it's actually coupled properly and there's no daylight between my fifth wheel and the trailer apron. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna uncouple this tractor and trailer and pull it away so that I can give you a better view of some of the things that we're gonna be checking at the back of the tractor right now. All right, so like I said, we're gonna uncouple here. Again, I wanted to show you real quick before we do that, again, I've got no gap between that fifth wheel and that apron there, so I know I'm properly coupled. But what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna grab this release handle here and I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna lock it open. Now I've unlocked that shackle that went around the kingpin so I can pull away. I put my landing gear down right now so you can see that it's not gonna drop the trailer. I'm gonna disconnect my airline and my electrical line. I'm gonna go ahead and stow them real quick and then I'll pull the truck forward 
and we'll go to the back of the truck and show you the, the things at the back of the truck you need to know. Okay, so we're at the back of the truck. I've, like I said, I've uncoupled from the trailer so we can get a better view of some of the parts we're gonna be looking at here. Let's again, let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at this over here. You would check this normally from underneath the tractor, but like I said, so you can see it better on the film. Here's what we did, here's what we're gonna be checking. This is your torque arm for your rear differential. You need to check that to make sure it's not crack damaged or loose and it's properly secured with all the bolts in place. You're gonna check your rear axle, your rear drive axle. This is uh, your differential. It's not crack damaged or loose. It's not leaking any fluids out of it. It's in good condition. The rear drive shaft that goes from the front differential to the rear differential, again, is not cracked or damaged. The, the uh, universal joints are in good shape. They're not showing any signs of uneven wear and they're properly greased. So as I work my way over, I'm gonna hit my brake lines. The brake lines that go to my rear brake chamber here have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. They're not leaking in any way. There's my wheel speed sensor line to the rear axle. It's not showing any abrasions, bumps, or cuts. My rear brake chamber is not cracked, damaged, or loose. The push rod, the slack adjuster is not cracked, damaged, or loose. The mounting bracket for the brake chamber is not cracked, damaged, or loose, and the brake chamber is properly secured to the bracket. As I work my way back to here, this is an air ride suspension. So this isn't, this doesn't have leaf springs. This is an air ride suspension. My airbag, both the upper and the lower plates that mount the airbag are not cracked, damaged, or loose. The air lines that lead to the airbag have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. They're not leaking. And the airbag has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, and it's not leaking. If you come on around over here, we'll take a look. We'll work our way to the inside of the, uh, to the wheels. So we start as we work our way out from the frame. The frame itself is not cracked or damaged. It's not broken. It's free from any illegal welds. The upper and the lower shock mount are not cracked, damaged, or broken. And the shock is not cracked, damaged, or broken, or leaking any fluids. It's properly bolted to the, to the frame through the brackets. It's kind of just the same way you did it on the front end, same, same system. Now what's important to notice here, these are not leaf springs, okay? This is a control arm because this is an, a, an airbag suspension, not a leaf spring suspension. So you wanna check that, come around on the side here and I'll show you where you start from. Again, keeping it all in an order so you'll understand it. This is your frame bracket for the control arm. The frame bracket is not cracked, damaged, or broken. It's properly secured to the frame and it's in good condition, the eye bolt this is what's called an eye bolt that secures it to the frame bracket. It's not cracked, damaged, or broken. It's properly secured. The control arm is not cracked, damaged, or broken, and it's, it's in good condition. If you uh, take a look here, you'll see that the control arm is bolted to the rear differential to hold it in place through these U-joints here. I mean, these U-bolts. Uh, these U-bolts are not cracked, damaged, or broken, or loose. Looseness would be indicated by shiny metal or metal shavings. Okay, so again, we're gonna do, this is just like we did on the front tires, okay? We've worked our way to the inside of the, of the wheel. We've got my, our brake pads here. Our brake pads are not cracked or damaged. They're, they have at least one quarter inch of, of uh, pad on them. The brake drums themselves are not cracked or damaged or broken. The inside of my rim is not cracked, damaged, broken, free from any illegal welds. The tire is properly secured uh, and, and mounted to the rim. The inside of my tire sidewall is not, uh, has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. It's not showing any kind of damage. I work my way across the top of the tire. The tire has no uneven wear and has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. Now, because this is a rear tire, um, a, either a, a trailer tire or a drive tire, it only needs two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth, not four like on the front. Uh, this has uh, more than two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth. I uh, work my way to the outside of my inner tire, the sidewall, has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. It's properly mounted to the rim on the inside here. The rim itself, the inside of the duals, is not cracked or damaged. It's free from any illegal welds. I work my way to this tire bead for my outside tire. It's not cracked. It's, uh, the bead itself is not cracked, damaged, or, or broken. And the tire is properly mounted to the bead. Um, the sidewall, the inner sidewall of my outer tire, 
has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. It's free from any damage. I work my way across the top of the tire again, just like I did. It has a more than uh, two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth, no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, nothing stuck in the tire. Work my way to the sidewall here, no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, in good condition, properly mounted to the rim. The rim itself is not cracked or damaged. It's free from any illegal welds. These are my lug nuts. My lug nuts are properly secured. Remember, looseness would be indicated by shiny metal metal shavings. My wheel seal is not leaking any oil into the inside of the rim. Here's my valve stem. Now remember, on a drive tire like this where you've got duels, you've got, um, you've got to check both valve stems. It can't be cracked, damaged, or loose, and they don't want to be leaking. And because, again, these are duels, you've got dual tires, there's one other thing you have to check for here. You do have to make sure that you have proper clearance between the duels and that there's no debris caught between the tires, something that you may have run over out on the road that got trapped between the tires and it's going to rub and cause friction. Now, something about these tires, because they are, um, because they are rear tires, either drive tires or trailer tires, can be recaps or retreads. These are recaps. There's a couple ways you can tell. You'll see a seam around the outside here. And also, if you look here, you'll see a seam right here. If you look right there, you can see that seam that runs across the tire there. That's where the belting was glued in place. It was stretched back across the tire after they shaved it down and they re-glued tread back on that. Um, so, uh, but because this is a rear drive tire, that's, that's perfectly okay to do that. Um, now that we're uh, at the back here, we would check our mud flap hanger. It's not cracked, damaged, or broken, or loose. My mud flap's in good condition. It's got sufficient clearance off the ground. And you would also check the back area here. My lenses and my lights uh, are clean and they're of the proper color. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna back back up underneath the trailer again so I can show you the other things you'd be checking for as you move your way down the trailer. So we've coupled back up to this trailer um, so that we can take a look at the other things we'd be looking at. One of the other things that you'd be checking is to make sure that you have proper clearance between the back of your tractor's frame and your landing gear so that when you turn, uh, you're not gonna crash uh, the tractor frame into the landing gear. That would lead us to our landing gear. You would check the landing gear. Make sure that it's not cracked or damaged. All the lateral bracing is secured, bolted in place. It's not cracked or damaged. Check your landing gear handle. Make sure that your landing gear uh, travels up and down, which in this case it does. No problems there. Restow your, your handle. Now I'm going to move along in, um, bottom end of my trailer here. All my cross bracing is not cracked or damaged. It's not loose. It's in good condition. I'm going to work my way down here to my airlines. My airlines are not cracked, damaged, or loose. Nothing is hanging from them. All the fittings are not cracked, damaged, or loose. The lines themselves have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. And we want to make sure that they have sufficient clearance um, from the ground to make sure that they're in good condition. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the back trailer tandem and show you what you need to check there. So we're back underneath this uh, tandem now. Here's the things we're going to be looking for. The rear axle is not uh, cracked or damaged. It's not leaking any fluids out of it. These are our brake chambers here. You can see the brake chambers. These are spring brake chambers. Number one, because it's on a trailer uh, made past 1975. It has to be spring brakes. But it also you can tell because it's got the dual lines leading to it. One is for the service brake side. One is for the emergency brake side. The hoses leading to uh, the brake chambers have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. They're not leaking properly secured to the brake chamber. This is my ABS line. It's not cracked or damaged, leading to the wheel speed sensor. The brake chambers themselves are not cracked, damaged, or loose. The push rod and the slack adjuster is not cracked, damaged, or loose. You would check the slack adjuster by pulling on it. Now you do have to mention, you would have to say with the brakes released. See, if I pull on it right now, it's rock solid. Well, it's because the brakes are set. The brake pads are pushing up against the inside of the drum and they're not going to move anywhere. You have to check it with the brakes released to make sure that the adjustment is in, in, in good order. As I work my way to the outside, you're going to look, you can see your shock towers here. They're the same on either side. The shock tower is not cracked, damaged, or loose. The upper and lower shock plates or mounts are not cracked, damaged, or loose. The shocks are not leaking any fluid out of them. I would check my control arms. Here's, these are the control arms that hold the airbags, and that's what it rides up and down on. The control arms are not cracked, damaged, or loose. The upper and lower mounting plates for my airbags are not cracked, damaged, or loose. The airbags are free from any abrasions, bumps, or cuts. 
and it's uh, not leaking in any way. Work my way to the inside of my brakes again. This is the same as you've checked every brake. If you look at the inside of the brake, you can see that the uh, brake pads are not cracked, damaged, or loose. They have at least one quarter inch of pad material. The brake drum is not cracked, damaged, or loose. It's free from any contaminants, oil, or grease. The inside of my wheel is not cracked, damaged, or loose. It's free from any illegal welds. The inside of my tire wall has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. It is properly seated to the rim. And we'll move our way to the outside and I'll show you the rest of it. All right, so we left off on the inside tire sidewall, exactly the same as you've checked the uh, rear drive tires of the, tra of the tractor. Check the tops of the tires. They're not showing any abrasions, bumps, or cuts. No objects impaled into them. Have at least two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth. These are rear trailer tires, same as the drives, that's fine. Check the sidewall of the inner tire. No abrasions, bumps, or cuts. Properly seated to the rim. The rim has no cracks, it's not damaged in any way, free from any illegal welds. The inside sidewall of the outside tire, same thing, no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, properly seated to the rim. This sidewall, no abrasions, bumps, or cuts, properly seated to the rim. Again, this is a retread, you can see the seam around it, that's okay, it's a rear trailer tire, no problem. Properly seated to the rim. The rim has no cracks, no, free from any illegal welds. All my lug nuts are in place. They're not cracked or loose. Looseness would be indicated by rust streaks or shiny metal. My valve stem's in good condition. It's not cracked or loose. It's not leaking any air out of it. Remember, at least 100 PSI of air pressure, you would check it with a gauge. And my wheel seal is not cracked or leaking any fluids. All right, move our way around to the back of the trailer here. Hit my mud flaps, my mud flap hangers, my uh, ABS uh, light, my rear lights. They're clean, they're of the proper color, not cracked, damaged, or loose on my uh, mud flaps. They're properly cleared off the ground. Work my way to the back of the trailer here. Back of my trailer, general overview, nothing appears to be cracked or damaged, no intrusions or holes in my trailer door. It's in good shape, it's locked. My lenses and my lights and my reflectors at the back of the trailer are clean and of the proper color. My DOT bumper is not cracked or damaged, and I do have the DOT reflective tape in place, and it is clean and of the proper color. That concludes the exterior portion of the pre-trip inspection. Here's what you need to remember. Like I said, right now you would be able to tell the examiner, look, I've already checked this side of the truck. I would check the other side of the truck the same way I just checked this side. Again, they're not examining the truck. They're examining you. They're making sure that you know how to do a pre-trip inspection. Obviously on a real pre-trip inspection, you need to check the whole truck. You need to walk around all, you need to check all tires and all brakes. But for the purposes of passing the test, you only need to demonstrate it on one set of axles because every other axle is exactly the same. And you'll see that recurring way of doing it over and over and over again. It's the same way of checking it, you just need to know exactly what you're checking for at specific points. Now we're going to start the end cap portion of our pre-trip. So now we're going to start the end cab portion of the pre-trip inspection where you check all the gauges and your dash and your brakes and all that. Your end cab starts typically depending on the truck and where everything's positioned at. A lot of times it'll start outside the truck because you've got it. The first three things you're going to check for is your three emergency devices that you have to have, which is going to be your fuses, uh, your spare electrical fuses if your truck uses fuses, your 10BC or better fire extinguisher, and your three reflective triangles. In this case, there's a handle, little handle down here I release. It pops a door open on the side. All of those things are back here. When you're doing the pre-trip exam for the examiner, you do have to actually open the door and show it to him. He's going to be outside the truck with you, and you'll show him where those devices are, and then he'll climb around the inside, and you'll start the actual end cab portion. So remember, uh, your spare electrical fuses, your three reflective triangles, and your 10 BC or better fire extinguisher. And, they have, and the fire extinguisher has to be properly mounted in place, secured, and has to be current and properly charged. All right, so we're going to step up onto the inside here, and we're going to start our end cab. Now, I like, just like all of my pre-trip inspection, I like to work it in a system, okay, so that it, I, I like to let things flow across, so that way I don't forget anything, and I keep things where I, I, I can memorize everything. So the first thing we're going to do, and it's critical to remember this, is put your seatbelt on. If you don't put your seatbelt on during the pre-trip, uh, they will fail you. So I'm going to put my seatbelt on, and you also want to mention to the examiner to put their seatbelt on as well, because they won't put it on if you don't tell them. 
I'm going to check my seat belt, make sure it doesn't have any abrasions or frays or cuts on it. The seat belt properly latches. I'm going to look around on my floorboard and make sure that my floorboard is free from any kind of debris that might roll around on the floorboard and get caught underneath my pedals so they can't operate the pedals properly. In this case, I'm fine. I'm going to check my shifter. It's not cracked or damaged. It's not broken in any way. My splitter's working properly. Okay? And I'm going to start working my way around. I like to work from left to right. My, win my windows are, are, are not cracked or damaged. They're clean and of the proper color. My mirrors are not cracked or damaged. They're clean. They're properly adjusted. My windshield is not cracked or damaged. Has no, uh, no obstructions, no illegal stickers on it that would impede my view or prevent me from being able to see properly. I'll work my way across to the passenger side windows. They're the same. They're clean. They're not cracked or damaged. My mirrors are clean. They're not cracked or damaged and they're properly adjusted. Properly adjusted means I can see down both sides of my trailer equally. I've got a clear view of my trailer, but I can also see what's outside the trailer as well. So I can see where my trailer's going while I'm backing up. I can also see that where vehicles are while I'm driving down the road. All right, so we're going to need to go ahead and start the vehicle up now so that I can check all my gauges. The vehicle has to be running for that. Uh, we're going to perform what's called a safe start. A safe start just simply means you make sure the vehicle's in neutral. You move the shifter from side to side. If it's in gear, it'll be stiff. It won't move. If it's in neutral, it moves back and forth from side to side freely. I'm going to fully engage the clutch, and I'm going to start the truck up. Now, at that point, I can check my ABS light. When you first turn the key on and start the truck up, you get an opportunity to check my ABS light, your anti-lock brake light. It should come on and then go off. If it doesn't come on, something's wrong with the ABS. If it comes on and stays on, something's wrong with the ABS. While it's doing its brief little diagnostic, it'll come on and then go off. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check, I'm gonna start again, just like I did with uh, everything else. I work my way from left to right. I'm gonna start checking all my gauges. The gauges are easy to check because the gauges tell you what they are. My oil pressure gauge is operating properly. It's at the proper operating levels. I've got uh, my water temperature gauge is at proper operating levels. My voltmeter is working properly. It's at the proper operating levels. Um, my RPM gauge, my tachometer, I can rev the engine up and I can see it's working properly. Now my speedometer, I can't tell if it's working properly because I'm not moving yet. You'll get to do that when you do your rolling brake test, okay? Uh, my air pressure gauges, both my primary and secondary, they're charged and I'm at the proper operating levels. Uh, my fuel uh, level gauge is I've got fuel, I'm at the proper operating uh, amount of fuel, I can safely go out on the road with it. I've got an application pressure, pressure gauge here which is not showing anything right now because I'm not applying the brake. And, and my uh, transmission temperature gauge is fine as well. Work my way across. What do I got here? I've got my, my windshield uh, wipers. My windshield wipers work. My windshield wipers themselves um, have no abrasions or cuts on them. They're in good condition. And my washer uh, works. Spraying fluid, cleans my windshields properly. It's working properly. Okay, at this point I would want to check. Um, you can start running through uh, your, your lights. Start checking my lights. I've got my left turn signal works properly. My right turn signal works properly. My hazard works properly. Uh, as I'm working my way across, I would check my my uh, my front headlights. Turn them on. The light indicators come on. Okay. My brights. My bright indicator comes on. My brights are working. Okay. You'd want to check. You got to check your defroster. Defroster is not a luxury in a truck like this. When you're operating in cold conditions, you want to make sure your windows don't fog up. So I would turn it to the defrost position, and you have to make sure that it's blowing on the windshield, which it is. It's working properly, so my defroster is working. Turn the fan off now. I know that's working. At this time, I can check my, my horn. I can check both my city horn, my air horn. They're working properly, so they're in good condition. All right, so I've checked all my gauges. I've checked everything on my, da my, my dash. I've checked my windows, my mirrors. I've checked my horn. Now I'm going to go into my brake check. And this is, remember what I said, and when you do your brake check, the brake check is the one part that you can't miss anything on. You have to do it 100% correct. It's very simple. There's not a lot to it. All these other things we've mentioned, if I missed one thing here or another, 
it's not going to fail me. It just means I haven't accumulated that point. But I can still accumulate enough points to pass. If you don't do your brake check right, you will not pass. So let's go ahead and start the brake check. In order to start the brake check, what you're checking for is to make sure that the system is not leaking to an extent that makes the vehicle unsafe to operate. You have to shut the truck off in order to do that because if the compressor is still running, it'll mask any leaks because it'll keep building pressure. So we got to shut the engine off. But before we do that, because we're going to be uh, disengaging the brakes, I've got to bring the vehicle into gear so it doesn't roll away. So I'm going to push the clutch in. I'm going to bring the vehicle put it back into first gear. And without letting the clutch out, I'm going to go ahead and shut the engine off. Okay, now I can let the clutch out. But now I need to turn the key back on, because if I don't turn the key back on, my gauges won't work. So I'm going to turn the key back on. Okay, and then I like to put the window down. I like to put the window down so I can listen for any air leaks outside. So I'm going to put my window down. Now I'm going to start my brake check. But here's the, one of the most important things that needs to be done that people forget to do all the time. They forget to push their brakes in. They forget to push these parking brake control knobs in. If you don't charge the brake system, you can't tell if it's working or not. You can't tell if the system is leaking or not. So I have to push these brake knobs in in order to make sure that I have to charge the entire system to listen for leaks. So I'm going to start by first pushing the knobs in. Okay, That's why I had to put it in gear so the vehicle doesn't roll away. Okay, Push the knobs in. And I'm going to wait while the system fills with air. That's not a leak. That's different areas and chambers being filled up with air pressure. You're going to give it about 10 seconds, 15 seconds for the system to stabilize, and you're going to wait. And I'm going to also listen outside and make sure that it's not leaking, which it's not. Okay. Now I'm going to start my static brake check. My static brake check means I'm going to look at my gauges. Now remember, because this is a combination vehicle, it's not a straight vehicle, my combination vehicle maximum air pressure loss on a static brake check with no brake applied is going to be 3 psi, no more than 3 psi over a 60 second period. So I'm going to start my static brake check. I'm going to watch my gauges. I'm going to tell the examiner. I'm going to make sure that I don't have any more than 3 psi air, lo air loss in both my primary and secondary air gauges over a 60 second period. Okay? So I'm watching the gauges. They're not losing any air. And then what will typically happen is the, the examiner is not going to make you wait a full 60 seconds. All right, They're going to say they've usually got a stopwatch, and they'll say, okay, go ahead and move on. And then you'll move on. And then the next thing you're going to do is your applied pressure test. You've got to apply the brake. So you're going to put your foot on the brake pedal, and you're going to apply it and hold it. Okay. Now I've done my applied pressure test. I'm going to watch the gauges. I can't have, because I'm applying pressure now, it allows me one more PSI of air pressure loss over a 60 second period. So now I'm going to say I can't have more than four PSI of air pressure loss over a 60 second period on my applied pressure test. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and release it after the examiner tells me it's okay and I've gone 60 seconds. Now I'm going to do my leak down. My leak down is to simulate an air leak in the system so that I'm checking my early, my low pressure warning signal. That goes on at 60 PSI, okay? So I'm going to start fanning the brakes down. Remember, every time you apply the brakes and release them, you use and lose a little bit of air pressure. So every time I press and release, press and release, my air pressure gauge drops, my early warning buzzer and the light came on on the dashboard at 60 PSI. So I know that my low pressure warning signal is working properly. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my emergency valves, my emergency brake uh, valves, to make sure that they pop out automatically like they're supposed to. In a uh, commercial vehicle like this with air brakes, as you start losing air pressure, if you get too low on air pressure, these valves won't stay open. They'll pop out automatically, which would apply your emergency brakes on you. So I'm going to continue fanning it down, and my emergency brakes are going to come on somewhere between 20 and 45 PSI. So I'm going to start fanning the brakes down and watch the valves. You have to make sure they both pop out. All right, there you go. They just both popped out. That let me know that my emergency brakes come on for both my tractor and my trailer. Okay, and they came on somewhere between 20 and 45 PSI. My emergency brakes work. A simple way to remember that step is remember the acronym SAIL, S-A-L-E. Okay, 
The first thing I'm going to do is S. For S is static, my static brake check. A, my applied brake check by applying the brake. L, my low pressure warning signal. And E, my emergency brake. Sale. S A L E. That's a very simple way to remember it. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I have to start the truck back up because I got to recharge the air system and I'm going to do my brake checks. I'm going to actually make sure that the brakes are holding and that they're working properly. So again, we're going to perform a safe start. I'm going to push the clutch in, disengage the shifter because remember I had it in gear. Make sure it's in neutral. Start the truck up. Now my buzzer's still going because my air pressure is too low. It's below 60 psi. So I'm going to run the air. I'm going to run it up by running the engine up to a fast idle so that my compressor is working faster, it'll charge the system faster, get us up to the proper operating levels of air pressure. Checking, first thing I'm checking is my emergency or my parking brakes. Now, you're going to have to check these individually. You don't check them at the same time. Right now, they're both set. My tractor and my trailer are set. If I put the vehicle in gear and tugged against it, I don't know which one's holding it. The trailer could be holding it or the tractor could be holding it. I've got to check them individually to make sure that they're both working properly. So you can operate this individually. So it doesn't matter which order you do it in. I like to check um, my trailer first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the clutch in. I'm going to bring the vehicle into first gear, leave the clutch pressed in. And the first thing I'm going to do is release the, sp the, br the spring brakes on my tractor. So by pushing in the yellow knob, now I've released the brakes on the tractor. My trailer brakes are still holding them. Now I'm going to lightly let the clutch out and you're going to feel the vehicle tug against the clutch. But it didn't go anywhere. I'll do it again. It didn't go anywhere because the trailer's spring brakes are holding, okay? So I know they're working properly. They're, pro they're, they're set. They're holding the wheels from turning. Now i got to check the tractor, so I've got to release the trailer brakes. So I'm going to set the tractor brakes. I'm going to release the trailer brakes. Now my trailer brakes would roll right now, but my tractor brakes won't. So I'm going to let the clutch out again. The vehicle doesn't go anywhere. That's because the brakes are set. Okay, so now they're both, I know they're both working. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to release my tractor brakes. My trailer brakes are released. The vehicle will roll now. I'm going to let out the clutch. I'm going to get up to about five miles an hour. And I'm going to lightly hold the steering wheel. And then I'm going to apply the service brake. So I'm going to be checking my foot pedal brake, my service brake. So I'm going to let the clutch out, get the vehicle rolling. I'm going to get up to about five mile an hour, and this is an opportunity to check my speedometer. My speedometer is working. I'm going to push the clutch in and apply the brake. The vehicle came to a stop. I lightly held the steering wheel because if the steering wheel jerked when I applied the brake from one side to another, that would mean one brake was grabbing while the other one wasn't. It could indicate that it's out of adjustment. In this case, it worked fine. I'm going to put the vehicle back in reverse, and I'm going to uh, back back up where I started from. Includes the end cap portion and your brake check for the CDL test. That's all you're required to do. Keep those in order and remember your sale, S A L E, and then remember to do your trailer tug, your tractor tug, and your five mile an hour roll test. Um, for purposes so you'll understand one thing, this isn't required to do in the test, but I want you to understand how it works. Um, this is our trailer brake. 
This is, they call it your trolley valve, your Johnny bar. Sometimes it'll be a handle that's on the steering column. Sometimes it's on the dashboard. This applies just the trailer's service brakes, not the trailer's uh, parking brake, the trailer's service brake, okay? So if I want to check that, it's a tug test, same as I did on the, on the uh, emergency brake. Bring the vehicle back into first gear, and then I would apply the trailer brake and lightly let out the um, clutch and the vehicle doesn't go anywhere, that's because I'm holding the trailer's service brakes. You're not required to do that in the test, but this lets you know how it is a good idea to check it because you might not have, this might be a, a trailer that you've never driven before, you've never pulled it, you don't know anything about it, you don't know if the service brakes work properly, that gives you an opportunity to check the trailer that you just picked up. Now I'm gonna put the vehicle back in neutral and I'm going to set the parking brakes again by pulling them out. I've just exhausted the air and set the parking brakes, shut the engine off, and we've just concluded our pre-trip inspection. If you need a change in your life, something challenging and new, a career that's more rewarding, that brings out the best in you.